Okay. Uh, welcome uh, to my podcast, everybody, out uh, to the, my YouTube channel, rather, uh, because Jenny was talking about podcast, the podcast was in my head. Uh, welcome to the uh, new edition of All Viewpoints. If you're just joining me uh, for the first time, I say thank you so much for joining. If you're uh, returning again, uh, thank you so much. I have today with me uh, Jenny Tarwater, and this is one fantastic woman. Uh, and I was just saying to her, I don't know how she does what she does, uh, because I think my first encounter with you, Jenny, I can't remember when, but it was in the Agile community space. Uh, and that's where we met. And ever since you've kind of like been doing all these wonderful things within the Agile space. And I thought today we're going to be talking to Jenny, how she does it. How did you get involved? What do people need to do to get involved? But first, uh, I'll let uh, Jenny introduce herself. Thanks, Kimmy. I'm happy to be here. So excited. Um, I My name is Jenny Tarwater. I live in Kansas City. I've lived here my entire life, except for a few years um, that I was away for college, which was only two hours away. So I'm a Midwest girl. Um, I discovered Agile in, formally in um, 2012. And so it's been just over a decade that I've worked in this space. And um, since 2024 that I've been an Agile coach. And yeah. what else you want to know about me? Um, I have a 13-year-old daughter. Um, and those that have had a 13-year-old daughter or have 13-year-old 13 13 year daughters um, know what that's like. And um, a dog and a husband um, here in Kansas City. Thank you so much, Jenny. And I think Jenny has been modest here yeah, because she's she does far more. I think she's a superwoman. Uh, <laughs> she is a superwoman. Um just reflecting on your own journey within the Agile community, and I know you said you're an Agile coach, um, mm -hmm. what has been the most rewarding part of what you do in the Agile community? Because you, you're you part of Women in Agile, that's where we're met. Right? Yeah. Well, but yeah, we can talk about Women in Agile for sure. Um, so um, the first exposure that I had to women in Agile was before it was a 5013C and before it was a, a formal community. It was still um, an idea that um, Natalie Warner and 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 some other folks like Lisa Atkins and um, Allison Pollard and, and some folks had had some open spaces about and had some discussions about. Natalie had written um, a paper in college about it. There was a there was a listening session um, at Agile 2015 in Washington, D.C., and um, to set the scene a little bit, this was my first Agile conference. And so all of a sudden being around thousands of folks that had the same interest as me, mm. um, who had the same challenges at work as me, uh, who um, <laughs> both thought like me and thought a, a, a lot differently than me, but mm. we could talk about it. Um, <clears throat> I was in a lot of awe already. Uh, and Lisa and Natalie had a listening session over uh, lunch on Thursday. So I'd been there for four days and we talked about what women in agile might be like and what were some high dreams. And I was sitting next to a woman, um, Billy Schatzpeltz and I know. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Love Billy. It was also her first conference. So you can see she and I and we're all like, oh, yeah, this is fantastic. Okay, great. We have all these dreams. But one of the things we both recognized um, was, was that a lot of the folks that were up on the stage and they were talking were white men and folks that had been talking about it, talking about agile topics for a long time. And we also knew that we had an interest in doing the same and we didn't know how to bridge that gap. Right. Um, so was that something even accessible to us? And what was the preparation? And, you know, how expert do you have to be to get up on one of those stages and share what you knew? Because uh, we had stories. We knew that we'd been talking to folks for four days. Right. We knew we had things we wanted to talk about um, and that we had learning that we could share. And so um, being a being a session with Lisa and Natalie, you know, we, we went to lunch right afterwards and we made all these plans about how we were going to become speakers and wow um, yeah, yeah it was so exciting and then we went home and we didn't do anything at all like that I know yeah <laughs> like, like so often happens um 
And then the, um, Natalie had the four, first formal Women in Agile conference in 2016, or sorry, yeah, 2016. And then I volunteered that day. I said, next year, can I help with the, with the conference? And so the first meeting we had of the conference organizers, who else was on the committee but Billy Shutzbelts? Mm. And so Billy and I, um, uh, it, we decided to, you know, form a committee and we came up with this idea of our segment could be about folks that wanted to give talks. And, you know, we had, we could have experts talk about how to write a submission and experts talking about how to give a conference talk and such. And then we said, or we could just give our segment to new voices. Yeah. Um, oh, that's how it all started in new voices. Oh, it all started. Yeah. We just, we, we decided we were, you know, like, let's not gatekeep at all. Like we have a stage, boom, let's put the, the folks that have never spoken before there um, with little qualifications. Like we didn't want to mm -hmm. put a lot of barriers in place. Um, but we knew one of the things that we would be challenged as, because we weren't uh, experienced speakers at that point, uh, was we needed some kind of mentor. And we didn't yeah. even know what we needed in mentors. We just knew we needed um, someone that was known for um, giving time to the community, someone that would um, work with uh, whatever they, uh, whoever they were paired with, yeah. and we could trust to figure it out. And so we picked three protégés that year, three mentors that year gave each of the protégés um, seven minutes on stage. And then that's how Launching New Voices was born. Wow, that's interesting. And yeah. also I picked up why Women in Agile actually started. You know, I did volunteer with Women in Agile mm -hmm. as a volunteer manager. And I would often get uh, emails from men and say, why are you starting Women in Agile? How about Men in Agile? But actually, Women in Agile started because men did have a place for them yeah. to speak, to get involved, but the women were like, okay, wh wh what do we do? Right, yeah, yeah. Well, and what's interesting, if you, um, so Natalie's paper, she has a white paper that she wrote. Um, um, it's available on the Women in Agile website. Maybe I can include that in your-, in that, your That's notes. Natalie, right? Yeah, mm -hmm, Natalie Warner. Uh, which does uh, lay the the issues out pretty well. Um, um, but I think uh, one of my friends, Cheryl Hammond, laid it out pretty well. <laughs> she said, when I first started coming to Agile conferences, the the line to the men's bathroom was long and uh, the line to the- Ooh, that is surprising. <laughs> yeah, right. Because we we see now that the the ratio has, is, is quite different in the, the diversity metrics that we captured at Agile 2023 are showing that shift so uh, absolutely absolutely and i'm so so impressed about the number of women that speak at conferences now thanks mm -hmm. to women in agile for uh that platform and i know it's not just women you are entertaining when it comes to women in agile men are welcome too right absolutely absolutely um another great great story there um uh, so we we always say all genders welcome all genders welcome to women in adult. Absolutely, yes, yeah. And uh, I know there's some hesitancy um, for men to attend. Um, the first year that I attended, um, no, I think it was the second. So, so yeah, this was this was Agile 2017. We were all working up at the wall on, you know, with post-it notes and and flip charts. Let's do. Uh, and there were some some. I can't remember exactly what the prompt question was, but it was something about. You know, how can, what can we do to hear more voices? Yeah. And Declan Whelan, um, who oh, okay. is a, a man, yep. had one of the most poignant points that I can remember from the conference. And he, he was saying, what can I do? Mm. And um, the thing that came up and it sounds so, so, so basic. And I've heard it many places now, but it was the first place I heard it. Um, when a question's ask in a meeting pause 10 seconds mm. bow for other voices that's very important right and um i think joanna um Bossling also said in her her talk uh women will apply for a job they have six out of ten qualifications for whereas men or, or sorry 11 out of 10 qualifications for where men will apply for a job they have six of ten and I had just experienced that a few years before 
where I'm like, I can't apply for that job. I'm not qualified. And somebody- You're not qualified. alone. Yes. <laughs> so there, so there's, there is a real issue here with real statistics, um, you know, and such to, to look into. And so that's why we have women. So there is some disparity, um, disparity there between genders, um, between race, between nationalities, between extroverts and introverts, between- yeah um neurodiversity like all of these things there's there's um you know structural reasons why these things happen and so uh I think that that's one of the reasons that I was attracted to working with women in agile yeah and you've been doing a great job and I know you're not doing this alone so because uh, I know the people that you're working with but collectively you've been spearheading uh the um Mm -hmm. new voices within the agile uh, sorry i was going to say agile alliance but women in agile um and not just that you've expanded as well you now work uh, in partnership with agile alliance to bring uh new voices to the conference the agile attorney access at the same time scrum alliance right how did that evolve yeah, so um, we knew that that the obviously the Women in Agile conference was um, we were just a segment of that, but we went outside and worked with other conferences uh, like Scrum Alliance. Um, we were at uh, the Safe Summit. Uh, we were at Business Agility Institute's conference. Um, we during the pandemic expanded out to other countries too, which was really exciting. Uh, we supported uh, Women in Agile Africa and Women in Agile. Um, uh, ooh, I just forgot. Harry, don't, if you're listening, I can't, I'm sorry, I just forgot the name of your conference. Women in Agile. Um, I can't remember if it was Europe, I think is is correct. So oh, yes. Right. Women in Agile Europe. I remember that. Yes. Yes. That, so, that. Yeah. We had an expansion plan, right? So that we wanted to, to be able to support many conferences and we wanted to be able to conferences that... Uh, we're not necessarily women in agile focused. Um, so again, we've had some luck with that. We did find that scaling mm. is a challenge. We we have found that if there's somebody from our core team there, which right now includes Faye Thompson and Amelia Brighton Lake, um, that things it it's things go really well. <laughs> um, we figured out how to recruit proteges and mentors and, yeah. and the right questions and things. And uh, we've uh, we have ideas of how to scale when we're not there, but that's a that's a, brilliant because I, I remember being in Amsterdam and mm -hmm. no, you were not that Emilia wasn't there. No, none of you were there. Oh, no, yeah. no, and, yeah, and it still worked. Yeah, that was our that was an experiment, and we had um we luckily we had Annalie there uh yeah. who uh, emceed that portion yeah. the the women and the the women in agile launching new voices. Uh, hour within the Scrum Alliance um, uh, conference, uh, Annalie had been a protege with us and had yeah, attended yeah. many Women in Agile conference. So we had several sessions with her as well. Um, I hadn't thought about it this way, um, but she was like the protege MC where we mentored her. <laughs> wow, that that's I I mean I find um, mentoring very rewarding, and I was so excited when. Uh, you reached out to me and say, hey, Kemi, we have a, a mentee in Amsterdam. Would you be there? And I said, oh, yes, I will. And the uh -huh. fact that I was supporting that person to look through their um, the materials and giving pointers, which they were brilliant on the stage on that on that day. Right. Um, and I guess that's the reason why a lot of us uh, sort of like volunteer in the community, because some people would say, well, what what do I get? What's in it for me? Yeah, yeah. Well, well. Let me ask you that, Kemi. What was in that for you? What? How was that mentoring experience? I learned from the person too, because I was speaking in Amsterdam. You know, the uh, global scrum gathering in Amsterdam. And mm -hmm. as they were talking, I thought, mm, I could have done that too, right? <laughs> so it, it it's not about you knowing everything. It is a mutual relationship. So I learned from the mentee. I I couldn't watch them on stage, but I was part of the journey of them tweaking the materials and getting into a state where they felt comfortable for. And it was as if they were partnering with me on my own um, uh, speaking materials too, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's very, it's very rewarding. 
Uh, you know what you just reminded me of too? Uh, so I took training from the back of the room from Sharon Bowman. And mm -hmm. one of one of her points is um, the person doing the most learning in a class or workshop is the person talking, right? The person that's teaching usually. Like teaching is the best way to learn something. Absolutely, yes. And I think I just put together that mentoring is a great way to learn about speaking, right? Because you have to break things down in a different way. Like things that you might do instinctually you have to think about um, how to express that to somebody else or also what might not work for you might work for somebody else. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of um, deconstructing of your own uh, speaking and such when you're mentoring to help somebody else about how you prepare, yeah. what you do on stage, what you do after. Mm -hmm. you and so how do you engage people? I remember when I first started to... Uh, do public speaking. I mean, I started with a uh, lightning talk. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Sue Johnston, um, I don't know if you know her. Uh, okay. She is based here in Canada. And she said, well, Kimmy, you, you have quite good materials, but you need to expand on it. Why don't you join the Agile Alliance conference um, review team? And I said, and she could see the, the look on my face. I said, I don't know anything. She said, yeah, you could learn from that, right? And I started to review uh, submissions, learning, oh, this looks like a good one. This needs to be tweaked. And that's how I started. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, earlier on, you mentioned about allies. Mm -hmm. um, how, how does that work? What do they do? Uh, what does an ally do? Yeah, with the uh, women in Agile. Because you mentioned someone was helping out. I thought, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so uh, there's so many different ways that kind of question could go. I'm trying to figure out where, where we should go. Um, because you said, what do allies do? And the first thing that popped in my head was listen. Um, so what? Um, I didn't know if you were asking me as an ally or for what can women, the... the um, folks that attend things like a women in agile, what can they do? Yeah, I, I think it, like you said, it's kind of like multifaceted, right? We have men trying to support. I remember Tony trying to help out uh, by mentoring people uh, with the Scrum Alliance, you know, the mentee. And then you mentioned Duncan, uh, you know, volunteering to do certain things. So how can people uh, be involved uh, even though it's women in agile? Great, great. Okay, yes, I understood your question. Then, and I'm gonna generalize it, and not just say women in agile. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, say this for most organizations. Um, I think just being in the space, you find how you can participate and how you can can help. And um, so I've had that experience um, in other areas that I've done. Like I'm like, I don't know if I should. I don't know if I'm the right person to be in that space. I don't know if I'm welcome there. Um, those topics are not topics I know about. Um, I don't know what I don't know. I don't even know how to ask a question. And I'm nervous about going. When I start feeling that hesitancy, for me, that's a reason to go. For me, that's a reason to say there's stuff to learn there. There's stuff that I can do um, for others, for myself, that I, it's okay that I don't know how to ask the question. I don't know um, how I can advocate. I don't know how I can participate. But if I go and I listen, I can probably figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. So um, practically then for women in Agile or launching new voices or any of these programs, if it's something that you want to be involved with, call one of the organizers, reach out to them. I said call. I'm so dating my <laughs> Contact. There we go. Contact uh, one of the organizers and say, I'd like to be involved. What can I do? And almost all organizations um, that are volunteer will say yes. <laughs> you, let's find a space for you um, because volunteer organizations are short on um, volunteers that have the time, right? Mm -hmm. and, I mean, that's the it, it is it is um, a lot of work to do a lot of the things that the volunteer organizations do, yeah. and so there's always room for help. Absolutely. And you don't have to commit to a long term. You, you don't have to do two years. You don't have to do a year. You don't even have to do six months. Mm -hmm. You can do as little as you want and as much as you, you can. Right. It? 
Right. As agilists, we're supposed to be thinking small experiments, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, volunteer to do something. Be very upfront about your um, interest level, your ability to participate. You can always expand that. It's harder to contract that. Yeah. You could say something like, I know there's a conference coming up. Um, I would like to participate the day of the conference in a volunteer manner. Do you have something that I can help with? And if they say, you know, no, um, say, well, you know, is there something similar, like, you know, that has a, you know, limited commitment um, or something like that? And, and just and just talk through that with whomever the volunteer organizer is or, um, you know, on one of the particular programs. That's how Women in Agile does it. We have a volunteer coordinator. Um, yeah. So if someone's just in general interested, they can apply. Um, we also have positions that get posted on the Women in Agile site. Uh, so you can always look at that. One of the positions uh, that is open is the program director for Launching New Voices. Oh, that's that's your baby. Yeah, that mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, just like, you know, you think about all products have a life cycle, right? And and for that position for a life cycle, you know, I've been um, involved with it since 2016 um, in preparation with the 2017 being the first conference. Um, I think it's it's time to have somebody with new ideas and, and new passions in that. Oh, uh, come on, Jen. You do a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah. I, I must say. Not because you're here uh, and not because I know what you do, but you could tell by the uh, quality of uh, the uh, people, the mentees that you have, the mentors that put up their hands to say, hey, I am interested. Yeah. Um, well, what Amelia Brighton Lake and Faye Thompson have um we the three of us have really been um a strong core team. We've had some other folks involved, um, but we've been a strong core team um for several years and, and they're gonna stay on. And so um there'll be some continuity there. And like I said, I hope some fresh ideas as well. Right. Okay. I think I just I didn't listen properly. And you did mention listening earlier on. What <laughs> I think I heard now is that you're stepping aside. Yes. 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 And um, so I said, again, there will be, um, you know, there's um, continuity with Faye and uh, Amelia and having new ideas come in, I think would be uh, wonderful. I'll um, always be, I'm hoping kind of they'll pick me for a mentor sometime uh, so that I can fill that role. Uh, but that what that allows for, though, again, with the limited time, um, I want to um, go be in some spaces I haven't been in a lot before. And where uh, would that be? Well, one place that I have volunteered this year is a local conference that um, is DevOps Days, DevOps Days, Kansas City. And so I'm nervous, right? I don't know what DevOps people talk about. Right? Um, I have time to find out. I know, right? So I know that I'll learn a lot. Um, but immediately, once I was there in our first meeting, you know, we started talking and I'm like, oh, I have some idea. You know, I have some experience with that. I have some experience with that. And then I heard, well, we're looking for more diversity in speakers. And I'm like, I, I have some ideas there too. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, I felt that there was, there, it, it, it validated my decision pretty quickly that um, I can do things. And with, with launching new, with launching new voices type of work. Um, and other kind of work elsewhere. And so, um, yeah, I, I think um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking for volunteer opportunities that are more limited. So I, I don't want to be the director um, as much anymore as being a contributor um, and in spaces that I'm a little bit nervous being in. Okay, so Jenny, mm -hmm. these people are lucky to have you. You. Um, you're going to be missed in Women in Agile, that's for sure, but I know you're not going anywhere, uh, but the team is going to miss you. That I know for sure. But I know you're going to have fun wherever you are, and you're going to bring the fun along with you as well. So DevOps uh, Conference, uh, you are very, very fortunate, I must say. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another place, right. So the, uh, there's been so much in the, the agile space about sustainability. And so that's another um, interest of mine. So I just recently worked with um, Joanna Stone and some other great yeah. folks um, with the sustainability incubator. Yeah. Um, we came up with some ideas and such for a, uh, um, a local um, community garden and ways for them to expand memberships and such. So again, the, I like this idea of local work 
um, and that wasn't local work for me. That was, that it was a community garden in Canada. So, uh, incubator, uh, you know, the folks that were working on that idea could, could be um, outside of Canada. Yeah. I mean, Joanne Stoney, she's fantastic. She's in Canada here. Um, I mean, we used to meet when we were in person before COVID, then everybody sort of like got this past and uh, I'm not sure where a lot of the Toronto Agile community is nowadays. And then I moved myself. Uh, so where are you now? I, I moved to Windsor. Uh, well, Windsor, Ontario, not Windsor, wherever it is in the US. Because <laughs> yeah, I know there are multiple, uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, cities here in Canada, which names are in the US and in the uh, UK as well. So it can sometimes be confusing. But anyway, uh, Jenny, I, I wish you the very best in the DevOps um, conference. Uh, but I know I'm going to see you soon in uh, the Agile conferences because uh, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, so I don't know about you. Uh, however, I feel like as a Scrum Master or Agile coach, we need to be involved in the community uh, because I learn a lot. I get to meet people, right? Mm -hmm. Fantastic connections like uh, you and uh, talk about different things. Every time we see in person, it's like, oh my gosh, where have you been? <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so uh, how, what would you say uh, to people who are saying, well, I, I don't have time for volunteering or perhaps uh, how do I get involved in any type of volunteering that would help me in my career? Yeah, yeah. Well, a couple of thoughts too. Um, some people may not have time and that's okay, right? There's, there's, there's a, um, different times for different things. And I know that folks have real commitments. And so for those of you that are saying, no, but I really don't have time. You're listening to YouTube videos, so you're you are doing you know um, learning and growth and such. So I, I want to recognize that and take away a little of of the pressure. Um, if you are if you do have time for volunteering, you know do be realistic about how much time that you do have, because uh, there's a lot of guilt involved <laughs> when you don't have time to do the things that you've committed to. Um, and mm -hmm. I've been in that place uh, many times. So be realistic about it. If you if you do have the time and the desire, there's lots of ways to get involved. Um, in volunteer organizations um, is one way. And I think we talked about that. Call the organizer. Um, call call somebody in the volunteer organization that you that you know, and just you know express your interest. Right? Likely they'll be able to find something for uh, for you and and try and make a match there. Um, but another way is um, oh, you mentioned that you were uh, a reviewer for Agile. Mm -hmm. So I started reviewing with Agile Alliance in 2017 as well. And it was the experience as a reviewer that helped me learn how to write conference submissions. Yes. If you're, if you write, you're sitting at home, you um, write your conference submission, you have experience with one conference submission. If you're a reviewer and you review 50, right? Then all of a sudden you start seeing patterns. You start seeing what other reviewers might look like. Um, and then also you see how other reviewers are commenting or talking about submissions. So you get out of your own point of view and can see how others are. Um, I was also um, a track chair for Agile Alliance a few years. And that was interesting. That was a new level of learning because not only then could I really observe how all of the reviewers were reacting to what was in the submissions and what wasn't in the submissions. I could also see more about how certain things were getting selected. Yes. And what it really reminded me of was an interview process with resumes, right? Um, you know, they resumes, there's an art and a science to creating a resume. And if you have ever looked at a stack of resumes while you're trying to hire for one position, it is a really hard thing to do. Right? Yes, it is. <laughs> and then something what might happen um, where, um, you know, you're looking at a resume and you're just not understanding what it says. And then you've got 99 others that you can read through and understand what they're representing. That resume is going to get set aside. Absolutely. Yeah. Same thing with submissions. If you're if if the if the submission is making the reviewer do the hard work to understand what's going to be what's going to be on stage, 
it's likely to get put aside or get whatever whatever evaluation system that conference is using a lower rating. Um, you know, I I I I, um, I tell submitters, you know, the people that are reviewing have a job, and that is to make sure that the best speakers, the best presentations, the best knowledge gets on stage. Mm -hmm. Anything you can do to help them make that decision is helpful for you, yep. right? Um, as well as maybe sometimes your your session is not appropriate at that time, right? Not um, like it's not good, but just not appropriate for that conference. Right, right, right. Um, you know, and I can say it's just like, a, you know, when you're interviewing for one position, there can be four candidates that the interviewing team is really struggling to make a decision about. But at the end of the day, there's just one that's selected. That's right. So I'll say, you know, when you're submitting at a conference, if there are 10 really good submissions on Wardley maps. Yes, you're not going to get in. Not gonna, only one of those is likely to get selected. Yeah, that's right. right. And so there's sometimes it's it's a matter of 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 um I won't of luck almost. What topic are you selecting? How popular is that topic? Um, you know, is it one of the keynote topics? Right, mm -hmm. that's another reason, right? I mean, there's just all kinds of reasons. So, so um, you know, it's just so disappointing, and I am always so disappointed as a submitter when I am not selected at a conference. I know and everyone I, personally, right? It, and I've heard that before. You know, I've heard, um, and I've seen, I've seen it so many times where there's just such an excellent submission that we really want to select, and there's limited spots. Yeah. So. So this idea, when I said volunteer, when I said go volunteer, they need you. Like if you have, Absolutely. if you have a find a space, um, a conference submissions, I'm saying kind of the the opposite, right? It's you have to really um, be clear about you know what your topics, what your learning outcomes are for the attendees, um, uh, how you're going to spend the time on stage, right? Um, another way to find out, because um, I've I've worked with. I'm kind of a conference um, fan, uh, have been for a long time. And so I have volunteered in the speaker committees for Kansas City, PMI, PDD. We ran our own Lean Agile KC conference, mm -hmm. I worked with a couple of the Scrum Alliance events um, as a reviewer uh, um, and such. And so, I, and then kind of DevOps days. So a lot of different experiences and all of those conferences look for something a little bit different in their speakers. Yeah. It's really important uh, to read through all of the fine print in the submission process. Um, they often will leave tips or clues about what they're looking for. Um, if you have the opportunity, reach out to one of the organizers, one of, especially like, you know, and the speaking uh, organizer committee and ask, is there a topic that you're looking for that's not yet represented? Um, is there that's anything- great to do that. That's great. I, I would say um, some would welcome that, some maybe not as much. Uh, but try, you know, I don't think anybody would be offended. I don't think no, that would you know, no. get you in trouble with any of the conferences. Um, one of the things we did this last year with the Launching New Voices program is um, the folks that we did not select, we offered some time with me to talk about uh, conference submissions in general and then oh, their commission uh, in, in particular. Uh, and um, so it was an experiment. Mm. Um, uh, one thing I learned is that a lot of people will take you up on that. So, yes. <laughs> up on that and so I spent about two weeks almost exclusively just talking to folks that were submitting and giving, I, I made it a point. I, I wouldn't look at their submission before I talked to them so that I could be uh, very general in the advice and answer their questions without having their submission in mind. Um, and then once we answered the, once I responded to a lot of their questions, I would say, okay, are you ready for me to pull up your submission and we can talk through it? And almost, I would say maybe 85, 90% of the time, they were like, actually, I know now how I could have made that submission better. Yeah. So yes, I would like you to look at it. And then I'd pull it up and, you know, it, then it was a mutual understanding yeah. uh, of how I, as a reviewer, had looked at all of the submissions, not necessarily, it wasn't as personal about their particular submission. Um, and they were able to hear without being really kind of in a, in a reaction. A differentiative mode too, yeah. 
Right. Because they knew it wasn't personal. Right. I think there's, there's a part of your brain, your, you know, amygdala that reacts when, you know, you feel like you're being threatened, especially something, um, you know, it's very personal to see. And it's close to your heart too. You're passionate about the topic. Right. So by talking about it in a general way, um, it really, you know, it, it, it allowed for a discussion before the particulars in, in their, their submission. But that was, that was a, it was such a great learning experience for me too. There was a lot of validation mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in some assumptions. I mean, I haven't, I haven't been speaking for that long. So I still remember some of the questions that I had. Um, I had a wonderful mentor, Laura Powers. Uh, oh, and, oh yeah. She's brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. Um, I didn't, one of my first big talks with her, so we paired, we, it was both of our, from the beginning, it was a, a paired uh, submission and a paired talk, but she by, by far had more speaking experience, mm. right? Yeah, she does. So the things about submitting, um, I learned a lot from her, um, the things about being up on stage, how to hold yourself, right? Where to put your hands. I, I'll tell you what, the first time I talked, I don't know about you, Kimmy, but I'm like, this, I'm like, why do I have so many hands? Where do, what a, and it's so strange. I have all these like pictures of me talking. My arms are always up like this. They're like this. And I realized though that my, um, my mom told me this when I was little, she would be worried about me when I was swinging because when I talk, I do, I put my hands up when I get excited. I don't, I don't know what that is, but so I was like, oh, okay. I've got to learn how not to just like, like touch down the whole talk like this. Cause I get excited, but um, how did we, we're talking about Laura Powers. Okay. So Laura Powers, you know, pairing with somebody is a, another way to, um, go from having zero conference experience to conference experience. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I think it was probably some of that experience with Laura that helped us to think that having a one-on-one -on -one mentor was important for, um, for our protégés. Yeah. It is very important to, in every aspect, to have someone along the way and that boils down to mentorship right you cannot underestimate the power of uh, having a mentor or even yeah. having a mentee because it's both ways um so we we're just gonna yes i think you have a <laughs> well, I, could, I don't know it, is, are we gonna have like the the thing at the oscars where they start playing the music or like the the thing pull us off you know i love talk we could talk all day Kimmy. We, how no, long can we i know <laughs> And that's where I'm trying to like time box this so that we don't spend all the uh, time talking to uh, on a uh, camera because we can do our own conversation offline. <laughs> well, one thing I want to add then, because we are talking about being vol volunteers and you did ask about, um, you know, careers and stuff. So we've been talking a lot about the volunteer space, like conferences and things. Mm -hmm. uh, I gave a talk one time about volunteering at work. So again, a place where you might not have experience in a space or on a topic, um, volunteering some time there. So like when I um, when I worked in corporate America, um, I would often like raise my hand to go work on a project, even if I didn't think that, um, you know, that I could contribute maybe the knowledge there. I knew that I could contribute something like helping mm -hmm. organize. Um, or or whatever whatever I could bring to the table, but that's how I could learn about things and get experience with things yeah. that I didn't know about before. Um, and so I just wanted to raise that idea of volunteering within the work environment as well. Yeah, not not just outside, and mm -hmm. not even knowing anything means that you know that you need to know, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and, and I'm looking behind you, Jenny. You have lovely books all arranged. Uh, I love the way you've arranged it. What is that one book you cannot do without that you want to share with people? Ooh, the one book I cannot do without. I'm I'm sitting. There, I'm like, well, what's the context? Um, so um, that's a big one. That and I think it changes. So I so I'm just gonna I'm gonna pick a context. So that's helpful. So I work a lot with teams, mm -hmm. and I think that five dysfunctions of a team is one of the most um, instructive book on how to work with people. Um, it's accessible, right? I think anybody, um, regardless of how much they've read about collaboration and stuff, um, because five dysfunctions of a team is written as a business fable, yeah. it is very accessible and it speaks to you. Um, and I think the, it solves real problems. The first time that I read it, 
uh, I realized that there are ways that folks can be um, assured that they are being heard, even when folks are in conflict. And that was really profound for me. So that is one of my my go-to books. Yep, it, it is brilliant. So brilliant that I got the other one, Death by Meetings. Because the guy, <laughs> uh, what's, that, uh, what's his name again? Patrick Manzioni uh, well, was yeah. five the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it tells a very good story that it, it is so relatable. Yes, yeah. keep going back to that book. That's right. Thank you so much, Jenny. As always, it's been lovely talking to you. Uh, this is Jenny Tarwaters, everybody. Uh, how can people reach you if, you know, they wanted to? Yeah, so the most uh, dependable way to reach me now is LinkedIn. Um, I also recently, in a, uh, lots of changes, lots of transitions uh, for me uh, this year, um, I just left my employer and have gone back to being an independent uh, congratulations can I say that I don't know can I say yeah. congratulations for Le- <laughs> oh, we haven't talked since December lots of change. Wow. <laughs> yeah yeah so um and I I um I so like I, I don't have a website to send you to yet I keep saying I'm gonna launch it tomorrow so maybe tomorrow but probably maybe not. today maybe today maybe today's the day uh, so yeah, um, but LinkedIn is, 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 I think going to be there for a long time and I have some presence there. And so, uh, that's the best way to reach me. Um, yeah. And now yeah. you, you're kind of like on your own, you consulting, coaching organizations, teams and individuals. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I am, um, taking clients. So if you want folks to, um, learn some new ways of working and collaboration and um, really, I like say, using common sense at work, uh, then uh, please do reach out. Yeah. Thank you so much. And Jenna Tower is the best. I, I don't know why I keep saying a surname, maybe because it's just lovely combination together. <laughs> uh, Jenny is the best person to contact. Uh, whether you're looking for a, a coach uh, on one-on-one or mentorship uh, or you want to bring her into your team. She is uh, a fantastic woman to uh, work with. I have known Jenny for some time now and she she's dedicated. You commit to what you want to, you know, what you say you're going to do. So that's one thing I love about you so much. When Jenny says, I am doing it, she's doing it. Yeah. So a lot. Thank you, thank you so much. All right. Uh, Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, It is um, lovely to see you join us here. Uh, Until next time, uh, take care.